I was a communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews and an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Sivetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sabetic. I was a part of the whole dirty mess. For nine years, I lied. For nine years, I cheated and betrayed my country in word and deed. For nine long years, I was everything that decent people hate. For nine years, I was a communist, working as an undercover man for the FBI. This story may help you understand why I felt my job was important to everyone in America. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Draw the Red Curtain. There. There. See this? That is what I think of your editing. Very well, Vladimir. I'll report your change of heart to party headquarters and ask for a new assignment. No, no. Wait, comrade. Why? I am sorry. I I will put in the new dialogue. I do not want to disturb our comrades with such a petty quarrel. I was sure you wouldn't. But if only you weren't such an aesthetic nincompoop. <laughs> The party had me on an assignment that should have been easy. A soft job, but my only work consisting of editing a play to make sure it followed the party line. The job was a snap, with the one exception of the playwright, comrade Vladimir Mashinko. Vladimir had a public, and to them he was a white Russian artiste. But I wasn't a part of his public. To me, he was strictly temperament, with a capital temper. Please, comrade, don't look over my shoulder. Just checking the new lines. Go away. You better be careful of the cop's speeches. It sounds a little like deviationism. Comrade, go away. You know I can't stand to have you look over my shoulder. Excuse me. It is a pleasure. Hello? Comrade Savetic? Yes? Comrade Nora speaking. Report to me immediately. <laughs> And that's the way the job lost any softness it might have had. And trouble was mine without the asking. By now, I had almost gotten so that I was used to having trouble as a daily companion, but I never liked it. I left Vladimir attacking his typewriter like it was one of his hated capitalists while I went down to party headquarters, located in a forbidding gray stone building that was, ironically, squatting between two symbols of everything communism was against, a church and a bank. Inside, Comrade Norris, the local MVD chief, greeted me with all the warmth of a bowl of ice cubes. Sit down, Comrade. Thank you, Comrade. How is your work coming? Oh, it's fine. Vladimir... Keep it that way. I'll try, Comrade. But that work is now secondary. What? But I... We are going to take over the local dramatic arts skill. This will be... Local dramatic arts skill, but I... I You interrupt, Comrade. I'm sorry, but... The exact methods you will learn from Evelyn Vickers Hall... Is she in town? Yes. You recognize her name, I see. Naturally. She's one of our best organizers. She's been brought in as a wardrobe mistress at the theater where Vladimir's play is to be put on. How did she get that job? That's no business of yours, comrade. Sorry. 
As you know, Vladimir belongs to the Dramatic Arts Guild. You must get him to vouch for you so you can join, too. Well, that won't be any problem. Once in the Guild, you are to report to Comrade Hall for instructions. Clear? Clear. <laughs> It was too clear, all except the technique to be used. I knew the local dramatic art skill had a membership of over 2,000, including people in all phases of the theater, from prop boys to set designers and stagehands to producers. I was plenty curious just how a handful of reds were going to take it over. Curious but not disbelieving, I'd seen too many of their operations to underrate the threat of this one. As soon as I was away from Comrade Norris and party headquarters, I made my report to the FBI from a drugstore payphone. Hello? This is the man with the red hat. We're in the market. Go ahead, Matt. Evelyn Vickers Hall is coming to town. We're going to try and organize a takeover of the Dramatic Arts Guild. When? Right away. I got instructions to work with her. The commies aren't missing a bet in getting their message to the public. Go ahead with it, Matt. Send us a list of the reds you find in the guild. Then try to break up the deal without exposing yourself. <laughs> That's quite an order. Yeah. Good luck. Comrade, you are looking over my shoulder again. Nice dialogue. I don't like it when you... Huh? Oh, it's good, huh? Oh, it's great. Can you get me into the Dramatic Arts Guild? What? Oh, but why, comrade? You'll learn soon enough. Can you do it? Of course. When? Tomorrow. But in what occupation are you? The guild takes in all of the theater. What's the difference? Make it I'm a writer. Okay. Well, thanks. I... Uh-oh. Here comes Angel Child. Not of you, my own beloved. Oh, my beautiful Angel Child. <laughs> Did you miss your Vladimir? Oh, yes, yes. I adore you, my strong, my brilliant, my magnificent. <laughs> you see, Comrade Svetik, Sally knows me. She loves me. Yeah. Sally, be a darling. Put the kettle on. Of huh? course. Will you help me, Comrade Matt? He'd be glad to. But I... Uh... Go ahead. I won't miss you. <laughs> All right. Well, this way to the kitchen. I know. The kettle is there on the... Matt. Huh? We're alone, darling. <laughs> so we are. Well, I'll get the kettle and fill it. Oh, Matt. Why do you treat me like this? I'll do anything you say, only... Then turn on the stove. <sighs> Here, give me the kettle. There. Now, will you talk to me like a human? Sure. What do we talk about? Matt, I like you. That's nice. Well, what's wrong with me? Well, you're smart. You're very beautiful. Oh? But you've got the heart of a pawnbroker. Well, naturally. I'm a woman. You're a party member. My mind is. But my feelings are pretty bourgeois. You need some discipline, comrade. Badly. You did a good job bringing Vladimir into the party, but you're risking it with it. Nonsense. I can handle Vladimir. Either way, get a new boy to flirt with. I've got a new job to do. I'll be busy. New job? Oh, don't tell me with Evelyn Vickers Hall. Yeah? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, what's so blame funny? You'll see, my darling, tomorrow. She was a sensation, Sally Northan. No doubt about that. Blonde hair making a halo over a face that looked as though it deserved it. Only I knew how many lives had been wrecked. How many men Sally had ruined as a communist lure. The next day, I met with Evelyn Vickers Hall backstage of the Regal Theater. The commie organizer turned out to be a dumpy, gray-haired woman with a sweet face and a mouthful of pins. She talked around them as she worked on a costume. You know our objective, Comrade Zvetik? Yes, but not how we gain it. We only have a few party members in the guild. Twenty-eight, to be exact. We will need another hundred or so fellow travelers who will vote the way we say. Is that all? There's 2,000 in the guild. 2,000 members, yes. How many are ten meetings? I don't know. Three or four hundred. That's our strength, comrade. These stupid capitalists are not interested in their guild. For the most part, they don't attend meetings and pay less attention to what is done in the meetings. But that's vital to their work. Believe me, comrade, they are sheep. 
They do what the guild says and never question why as long as their salary checks are good. In short, all we have to do is control the meetings. That's right. And we will do it. You will see. What's my job? Your first job is the same as my own and Comrade Nostan's. Sally? She's in on this? Vitally. She's in the guild as an actress. We three are the nucleus. Our first move is to become important and active in the guild. Secondly, to become members of the board of directors. Mm -hmm. Well, that won't be easy. Most of the guild hates communists. From here on, we are not communists. You and Sally are socialists. I will be a reformed party member, now preaching a so-called new doctrine. I see. Same thing by a different name. Exactly. We will work only on those members who attend the guild meetings, and we will use three separate methods. Which are? Your method is to work on the intelligent. Use the progress scheme. The world must move forward. World unity. No more prejudice. I know that line. And Comrade Norstan will work on those susceptible to her um, physical attractions. While I, well, I'm the motherly type, so I've been told. I drag in the stupid and the lonely and the confused. Well, what will we do? Begin some get-togethers, some coffee clutches? That's the idea. Play down our real beliefs. Play up our concern about the poor and the oppressed. I understand. I'll use Vladimir's place as a cover for some parties. And... Miss Hall, is that costume ready yet? In a few minutes, Mr. Tyne. Well, shake it up. Sally's waiting for it. Sally? Sally Norstan? Who else, Buster? She's going to be the star of this here drama. Well, who's that little bundle of vitamins? Nate Tyne, the director. Oh. Stay away from him. He hates the party, and he's the big wheel in the guild. Any chance for Sally to bring him around? None. Tyne's married and likes it that way. Be very careful with him. He's the guild president and is the one man who could block us at the elections. What elections? Two months from now. A new board of directors for the guild will be elected. How many directors? Five, counting the chairman. And three of the new directors are going to be communists. <laughs> And I was a communist for the FBI. And the second act of our story. Matt, you dance with me? Save it for the suckers, Sally. Get to work on that big actor over there. He's ripe for picking. Oh, all right. But he dances like a tank with a broken tread. Henry! All alone. Why don't you ask me to dance, darling? But of course, son. <laughs> what a dame. Oh, hello, Mrs. Walker. Matthew, what a lovely party. It's just you two divine. Oh, thank you. I meant to tell you, I heard what you said to Nate Tyne last night. I certainly thought you'd put him in his place. You were brilliant. Oh, I was? Oh, my. Oh, but they really were your words I used. After you explained how backward we were growing, I woke up to a lot of things. Good. We certainly need some progressives. People like yourself to fight for the real human values. To tell the public about it. Oh, don't you worry. I'm going to spread the word. My plays are going to have meaning from here on. Real social import. That a girl. And uh, about the elections next week. You can count on me to vote for you in this hall. And Sally. She's one of us, too, you know. Oh, yes. Only, uh, she seems... <laughs> I suppose I'm just being a woman. I I'll vote for her, too. Good. And get some of your friends, too, Mrs. Walker. We need people like you on our side. Oh, I will. I will, Matt. <laughs> oh, my. I called you Matt. I hope you don't mind. No, certainly not. Would you like to dance? Me? <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah. 
It was working, and a nastier operation I've never been in, leading all the innocent and gullible for a red ride straight into trouble. We had nearly a hundred fellow travelers with us now, and Comrade Hall told us how we were going to use them. The divide and conquer method, Comrade. Tomorrow night is the last guild meeting before elections. We need a law passed making it mandatory that there be at least three candidates for each position on the board. One for us and the two other candidates to split the opposing vote. That's right. But we won't have a majority to get the law passed. Yes, we will. Tomorrow night we're going to filibuster. We're going to stampede our law through. But with only a hundred odd votes, By I... the time we've talked until four in the morning, so many of the opposing votes will have gotten sleepy and gone home. We'll have a majority. You'll see. <laughs> There it was, the simple way to control an entire guild with a handful of trained and organized reds. Evelyn Vickers Hall knew her business, and even the stubborn fight of Nate Tyne, the guild president, couldn't stop us. We made sure of that beforehand. Our comrades are down front. They know what to do, Comrade Hall. Good. Let's go on stage. The meeting's ready to start. that this new law to have three candidates is essential, fellow workers, if we are to have a truly democratic election. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, that great leader whom we all remember... All as... right, Miss Hall, all right. Make your point, please. We're waiting to vote. You were elected to the board under the two-candidate system, Mr. Tyne. You know I was, but I now... can understand, then, how you would like to stop the passage of this new law. All I want to do, Miss Hall, is to get some sleep. It's after 11. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tyne seems to dislike freedom of speech. What? Why, that... What? I put it to you, fellow workers. Are we to have a voice in our guild... Or are we to be forced to do the bidding of a few dictatorial leaders? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will go on. As I was saying, in the words of that great leader, Thomas Jefferson, whom we all remember as one of the great... Ten speeches and four hours later, the midnight session was losing attendance rapidly. And Comrade Hall wore a grin of triumph. The vote told why. The commie-inspired resolution was passed 120 to 98. It was the big test of our strength. And from there on, the elections looked like a red cinch. All except for Nate Time. The sharp-eyed little director was smelling lots of rats, and he showed it. You did a lot of talking at the meeting, Savetic. You too, Vladimir. What's your story? Story? We only said what we believed. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Only it had a bright pink color, just like a lot of your play, Vladimir. Pink? Me? You. If there's any more of it, you may have to get yourself a new director. Where's Sally? It's time for rehearsal. She's in the wings with one of the actors. I'll get her. Henry, you're really a very sweet boy, but I can't. But, but Sally, please. Oh, Matt. I hope you're looking for me. I am, and so is Tyne. He wants you on the stage. Henry, find something to do, will you? Of course, Sally. You train them well. Claude's. I want you. No dice. You're holding up rehearsal. Fully, I'm the star. They'll wait. How did that happen, anyway? Vladimir talked to Tyne. Tyne auditioned me. He thinks I'm a good actress. Oh, by that. Too bad you're not as good a party member. Party member? Is that all you think about? You make me sick. You'll be sicker after the control commission has your discipline. Don't bet on it, darling. You won't report me. It's your word against mine. And I can lie like the devil. <laughs> Goodbye, dearest. The laughing devilish angel child gave me the idea how to break up Comrade Hall's invasion of the Dramatic Arts Guild. I didn't have much time before the guild election, so the next night I went to the theater and found Vladimir backstage in Sally's dressing room. Ah, oh, good evening, comrade. Good evening. You're ready for the election? Sure. Uh, who has the room next door? Time, isn't it? The mm, little fascist. Yes, it's his office. I thought so. Does he use it after rehearsal? Of course. Hmm. 
Say, did you hear Sally in this scene she's doing on the stage? I think she's changed your dialogue. It doesn't sound so good. She's what? Changed my, my words? She wouldn't dare. I'll kill her. Vladimir went out like an angry jet, and I went to work in a hurry on the ventilator shaft that connected Sally's dressing room to Tyne's office. In five minutes, I had the grate open at both ends, and in ten more, I had the padded soundboards out of the shaft, leaving it an empty tin tube. I had no time to test it. I could only hope that voices would carry through it. Just as the rehearsal was ending, I caught Evelyn Vickers Hall outside the dressing rooms. Yes? What is it, Matt? I think you'd better speak to Sally. She's getting ideas now that she's starring in this play. She's ready to quit the party. She's what? Why, well, I'll strangle that pretty cat. She'll be coming to her dressing room here in a moment. Yes, and I'll be inside waiting for her. Matt, where's Miss Hall? My costume needs fixing. She's in your dressing room, Sally. Oh, thanks a lot, darling. Well, you're very welcome. Oh, Mr. Tyne. Uh, yes? Aren't you going to your office? Uh, not tonight. I'm going straight home. Why? I... Well, that, that is, I, I want to talk to you in private. Well, can't it wait? No, it's important. Well, uh, oh, all right, but uh, make it fast. Come on. Now, let's have a... Why, that I say I don't believe what you like, I don't care. You've got to care, like Miss Hall. Party will teach you to care. Don't threaten me, I comrade. don't like it. Party? Very well, comrade. Why, that dirty no time for me to The guild elections are in a few days. You know your job. Don't worry about me, yeah. Comrade Paul. Good yeah, night. so that's it. Now I see what... Svetik. Yes. Get out. What? Out. And forget what you've heard. But, but what you heard? heard me. Not one word about this. Did it work? It was anyone's guess as Tyne hustled me out of his office. I waited in the hall. Then, to my surprise, Tyne came out in a few minutes and left without a word to anyone. For the next few days, I waited in tension for Tyne to go into action. Nothing. It was obvious, as the day of elections came around, that Comrade Hall had overrated Tyne's hate for Reds, or underrated his susceptibility to Sally. Either way, the election meeting began with no sign that Tyne knew anything was wrong. And I sat on the platform with the candidates, feeling pretty sick, as I knew my plan had failed. Look, Comrade Sovetic, our comrades are all here, in a solid block down front. We'll win without a struggle... Yeah. And when we control the board, the guild will do as the party says. As I say. Miss Hall, look. Look what's happening. It was beautiful. Through all the doors of the huge hall they came, by the dozens, by the hundreds. In 15 minutes, the hall was jammed with people. Practically the entire guild had shown up for the elections. It was easy to see who was responsible as the grinning Nate Tyne stepped up to the rostrum. Quiet, quiet, please. Thank you, fellow members of the Dramatic Arts Guild. As you know, tonight is the night of our elections, the elections that some of our members were certain of winning under the guidance of Miss Hall. Yeah. The very same Evelyn Vickers Hall <laughs> who is at this moment sneaking from the platform, unwilling to face a guild united in its determination to get rid of communism. It was a great night, and a group of Americans had proven again that communism can and will be defeated by a democratic people. For me, I had to report to party headquarters the next morning and Comrade Norris was somewhat less than friendly. You failed, Comrade Savetti. Failed the party miserably. But, Comrade Norris, it was not my fault. It was Comrade Hall and Comrade Norston who were overheard by that fascist, Tyne. I am aware of that. That you were part of the operation. Therefore, you must share the blame. Yes, Comrade. Mm -hmm. Consider yourself lucky. You're getting only a reprimand. Comrade Norston has been turned over to the Control Commission for proper discipline. And Comrade Hall... Her crime is greatest. The punishment will be accordingly. Oh. Yes. 
It would be good if you kept in mind the penalty for failure. I think of nothing else, Comrade Norris, believe me. Good day. So there it was, another red plan gone wrong. But there were more plans, and behind them all, the deadly threat of their master plan, their historic mission. Until this threat was gone, I knew my work had to go on, and I would continue to be a man who walks alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. The names, places, and organization mentioned in this story were fictional. But the danger is a very real one, so be on your guard. Don't let your organizations fall into red hands. It can happen, and it has happened. But you can keep it from happening again. Next week, we bring you another exciting story based on the true life adventures of Matt Svetik. Join us for it, won't you? 